So if you want to know how to create the ultimate false nine in FIFA 23, then look no further than right here. My name's Ash, and today we are gonna go through all of the formations, tactics, player instructions, and everything else to get the best out of your false nines in FIFA 23. So with that being said, roll the intro and let's get into it. So thank you very much for joining me in this video today. We're going to go through all the kind of best bits to kind of get the best out of your false nines. For use of this example, we have gone with Tottenham, of course, because of Harry Kane, kind of the quintessential false nine. And we're really going to show you what you can do in terms of your tactics and your player instructions, your formations, attributes wise, to get the best out of these false nines. So first things first, let's talk about formations. Now, it's very important that you have a select few formations because the best thing to have to pair with a false nine are wingers. You want to make sure you have got wingers in those advanced forward areas ready to penetrate the opposition's back line. We are looking at the likes of a 4-3-3, for example, obviously 4 2 3 ones 4 4 twos, and that sort of thing, a 4 2 4 Those sort of formations work as well. And also, yes, you can, of course, use a false nine with any formation, essentially, but to really get the best out of it, these are the type of systems we're going with. We have opted for the 4-3-3, which is the most known to really work with a false nine. We're going to go with that today. Now, as I've mentioned, it's extremely ultra important that you have wingers to pair with this false nine. And we're going to go through why that is shortly. But first things first, let's talk about the player instructions for the striker itself. Very self-explanatory. Naturally, you want the attacking runs on false nine. But also, what you want is the support runs to be on stay central. I personally don't want them drifting out wide because you don't want them rotating with the wingers. You want them in the central areas because they're going to be able to get onto the ball more often than not. In addition to that, should you lose possession, then they are going to be in a better position to win the ball back and prevent any attacking transitions from the opposition. Whereas if they've drifted out wide, it's going to be harder to do that and therefore the opposition can play for you in the central areas. Now let's talk about the other player instructions because these are what is going to make or break the false nine role in your team and make it ultra important. Let's talk about the wingers first. Why do we need these? Why are they so important to the false nine role? Well, it is important because you have got these two instructions here. Get in behind and cut inside. And these are critical to having that false nine role. What this does is when you have a false nine, and they drop out into the midfield, what is the goal of that? What are teams trying to achieve? Well, one thing it does is the hope is that it drags out an opposition defender, it creates space for which then those wingers can exploit that space and it gets them into goal scoring areas. So that is why we want them to be on cutting side and also getting behind. It's important that they angle those runs to exploit the space left by that false nine and you get them into goal scoring positions. They're essentially kind of hybrid wingers because they're playing more of a false striker role as well. This is the most important player instruction to pair with a false nine. Now there are also some other player instructions that you're gonna need to know as well. In this 4-3-3, for example, we obviously have, in this case, a defensive midfielder and it would have been two central midfielders. I have moved one, Richarlison in this case, to central attacking midfield. Uh, why? Because we like him to get one of them at least to get into those more advanced areas. Now, it would be ideal if you could also have one of these midfielders to be really on get forwards to get them running in behind. So it's not just the wingers. You want more options and as many options as possible for that false nine. So in this case, we've got Hoybier who does have a high, high work rate. We've got him on get forward and get into the box. And you're going to find him also running in beyond the striker when he drops off into those midfield areas and it just gives him another option. You're really looking for as many runners as you can possibly get in order to complement that false nine role. This doesn't just also apply to the attacking midfield players. We're also looking for overlapping fullbacks as well. Now, plenty of you might use an inverted fullback and you want him to stay back to protect against opposition counter-attacking transitions. That's absolutely fine, but you want at least one, but preferably two fullbacks to be overlapping because they're another option. Plenty of times you will see, and I will have examples of this in the video here, where you will find that the fullbacks are actually the most forward option and a great option once a striker drops off to kind of get the ball to them and they're overlapping him. We are again in this case further emphasizing that need to get as many runners in and around the false nine as possible and enable your team to really be able to play through him and make him an ultra important part of this unit. What about tactical instructions? What are we looking for here to help complement this false nine role? Well, some of these you don't really need to worry about. It's whatever you prefer. 
But there are a couple of things that you do want to use. One of these is chance creation. Whilst forward runs would probably be the best because it provides you with the most runners as possible. In the example that you're seeing of the gameplay in which I was playing as Tottenham against Brighton, I was actually using possession and you're still seeing a lot of movement. So it doesn't necessarily have to be forward runs. It's about making sure that the player instructions have been altered to the point where you're getting a lot of movement and it doesn't matter whether you've gone for possession or forward runs. The most important thing though is the offensive width. You really are looking for something below 30 because then it's going to be very narrow. And the reason why we're doing that is to try and get the team not only closer to the false nine, but really for the wingers to get closer to those central attacking positions that has been vacated by that false nine. You'll see examples here of where the wingers are really playing. They look like strikers. Essentially, they look like half hybrid strikers. And that's because when the false nine drops off, the width is so compact. We have it on 20 in this case that they will come in more centrally. Pair that with cutting behind, cutting side and getting behind for their player instructions as well. And then you're going to see that sort of thing. So we're looking to make sure that we're getting numbers in and around him so that he's not too isolated and he's having to do things on a wide range. A very important note that I have to stress in this case, because I know someone is going to ask me in the comment section and it will drive me mad. Plenty of people ask, what about this role here, this CF role? We are currently using a striker in this case, but what about this centre forward role? And it's something that long-term subscribers will know that I am extremely passionate about for one reason or another. This position does not exist. It isn't real. It is something that EA have made up. I don't know why. There is no position in between striker and cam called centre forward. It doesn't exist. Centre forward is a striker. They are the same thing. When you hear pundits talk and they're talking about, oh, he's a great centre forward, they mean striker. They are the same thing. So this position does not exist. And as a result, I refuse to ever use it in FIFA. So you don't need to set him as centre forward. The false nine role works extremely well when they are a striker. It also means they'll get into more advanced areas when they need to. And you don't need to worry about changing centre forward. And if I see anyone saying that I'm wrong, I am honestly going to flip out. You might be thinking, what about these best attributes for a false nine? The best players? Who are the best false nines that I can sign in FIFA 23? And what attributes do they need? Well, you can find all of that in this video here in which I give you the best signings to make for the false nine role in fifa 23 and also go through all of the attributes the most important traits and attributes that they will need to be a successful and essential false nine so do go and check that one out after this video if you have any questions regarding the false nine then please do let me know in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to get back to you don't forget to check out my patreon lots of fantastic perks and rewards on there including exclusive tactics videos behind the scenes videos my fifa 23 tactics package with rankings and ratings of every tactic that we do cover on the channel as well as a host of other perks and rewards as well make sure to hit the subscribe button ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload and with that being said thank you so much for watching guys and until the next one i will see you soon